location and uh we're down here at the um at the dead river at the at the buddy hatchie river it's part of the buddy hatchie river in southern alabama my hometown and uh it, it's flooded the, the river's up the dead river's up i mean it's a lot of water i mean it's a lot of water uh it's water out here in the grass we're gonna try not to get on a snake and um uh, i'm gonna take those shad uh, the shad that I caught yesterday um, down in the Tennessee Tom Bigby, I kept those. Uh, I gave my cats two of them, they were small, but the big ones I kept. And we're gonna cut those in half, put a rubber band around them, and uh, we're gonna. That was a semi. <laughs> um, we're gonna throw out here in the river and see what we can come up with. Uh, what I'm going to be casting with is this. Now guys, this is actually my son's quantum uh, surf rod. 10 foot quantum surf rod. With an uh, with, uh, uh, optic 40 reel on it. With 30 pound line. almost dropped it with a three-way swivel except I'm not using the weight guys okay sweet three-way swivel with a uh, a number four gamma gatsu octopus hook and I, I think I'm gonna run it about I'll probably run it about three feet I'll, I'll put some more uh, distance on the weighted uh, cork on it Okay, uh, my second rod is going to be my, um, my Akuma 10 foot surf rod with my Alpha reel. It's loaded with 30 pound line as well. Same setup, uh, three -way sw a three way sw swivel, can't talk this one, I'm sorry guys, with an 80 pound leader on a number four Yamagatsu octopus hook with, uh, with uh, a weighted cork. And I've got a little split shot on there. Uh, I guess to hold it down at some point, but I don't even remember why I put it on there, but it's on there. I'm not even gonna worry about it. But uh, it's 10 foot and, and if I didn't say it, my son's quantum uh, surf ride is 10 foot as well. All right guys, uh, let's get some shad on these hooks. With a rubber band around it, around them, and get out here in this water. Okay, guys. My cork on our. Uh on my black ride, on my son's ride, it's gone. I'm just gonna let it have it and see if I can get it landed. Fish is slow moving water. 
You don't bite like fish. And fast moving water guys. Just grab it and go to reeling because the cork disappeared. Wait until they pull it, just like if it was on a, a lockdown pole. When they pull it, that means they're swimming off and they got it in their mouth. Good to eat. Nah. Nah, I'm just catching for my fishing show. Fishing show. That's it. Wow. All right, guys. I need you to see. Got a nice buff, like it's about five pounds. Wow. Okay. All right, guys. These both in are hard to hold. There is about five pounds. I'm at the go get my pliers out the car to get the hook out of his mouth. He's right. <laughs> okay guys, I tried to get the hook out, I can't get it out, so I could have an accident. But I'm not gonna keep him out of the water much longer. This is a big, nice bow fin. They're fun to catch. Let's get this champion back in the water. He's gonna be alright. The hook will just have to rust out. They're real resilient. These fish, these fish are prehistoric. They're like, uh, like gar. And they're not a trash fish if you ask me. They're just a big, bad predator. And they are not the uh, Chinese snakehead. See that dot on his tail? This is a bowfin. <coughs> Crap. My bad, guys. <laughs> this is a bowfin. We call them grinnels. I'm gonna get him back in the water, guys. Hey, if you like this video, hit that like button for me, guys. And if you like my channel, subscribe for me. Remember to smash that notification bell and put it in the alarm position so that you can get all my content when it comes out. Okay, he took off. Uh, it's about a five pound boat, and that's my first boat fin this year. Whew. He had already swim off with it, but uh, that uh, that shad worked. That was a, on a shad head. Well, let's get another hook on the line and see what else we can come up with. Okay, guys. Uh, I really hate that uh, I couldn't get that hook out of that uh, that bowfin's mouth, that grinnel. But uh, he was hooked like super good. Uh, he swallowed it, and with that being an octopus hook, that hook did its job, man. Okay, guys. Um, basically, uh, sorry about that. Basically, what happened was the hook was in the bait. And I noticed every time a bowfin hits an octopus hook, it turns just like with a catfish. I'm looking at my corks, guys. That's what's going on. And it turns over like that. And it hooks the fish every time. And that's what happened to that bowfin. Uh, it was a big bowfin, so he, he swallowed uh, that big shad head. And that hook, that octopus hook just turned over and hooked it just like that. <clears throat> So I couldn't just get it out and uh, be done with it. I tried to get it out, but my wire, uh, my pliers, wire pliers, needle nose, wire pliers, whatever you call them, um, they cut the line 
and I tried to get down, I still couldn't. So uh, I didn't show all of that. It just didn't. It was taking too much time, and I didn't want the fish just to die like that. So I got him back in the water, and uh, he'll probably live. That hook will probably just rust out. The fish, the fish eat. Uh, even after they got hooked, they'll bite the same day. They'll go right back and bite because that's what they do. All right. I don't know who that was, but they know me. <laughs> but um, let's get back to fishing, guys, and uh, see if we can get one more something before 4.30. It's like 3.40 right now. Uh, we are under our curfew in Alabama, and we, we have to be at home by 5 o'clock. So 4.30, uh, whether I catch another fish or not, I'm going to pack up and go home. And... Uh, finish the video. Okay guys, I got a fresh piece, fresh piece of bait. This time it's not just a shad head, it's a, a whole smaller shad with a rubber band around it. I'm gonna pitch it back out here and let it look back toward the bank again. Something just grabbed that cork, guys. It's got it right now. I don't know what it is. Yellow bullhead, guys. Yellow bullhead out of the, um, the Buddy Hatchie River, the Dead River. Look at that. Nice yellow bullhead. Alright guys, he's big. Put on my line tight. This is a nice yellow bullhead. Look at that. The little bullheads would live in that slow water. See how I let him have it? That's what you have to do. I got something on this other pole too. Let me check. Make sure the camera's on. Okay, let's get this little champion back in the water, guys. You want to get stuck? Let's get his other pole. Okay, guys, if you like this video, hit that like button for me. And if you like my channel, subscribe for me, guys. Remember to smash that notification bell and put it in the alarm position so that you can get all my content when it comes out. Okay, guys, uh, that voice that you heard uh, at the end of my video was a cool old guy, or I'm gonna say an older guy. And, and his his wife, uh, she didn't say anything. Uh, she didn't get out of the truck. They were coming from a little area up above from where I was fishing on the river. And when they came through, they were just stopping by to see what I had caught. And he wound up getting out and he was just talking to me. But I don't know their names. Um, I would give them a shout out with their names, but I don't know their names. But if, if, if you guys are checking this out, I'm giving a shout out to y'all. Y'all were cool man I, I love talking to you okay guys when you are fishing in small rivers if you are fishing for catfish 
and you put some fish. It doesn't have to be shad. It can be a bluegill. It can be a cut catfish. Whatever you're, with whatever you're fishing with. When you put that off in that water, you're subject to catch a bowfin, a grinnell. We call them grinnells. Okay. But you're subject to catch one. So I mean, don't get all bent out of shape if you wind up catching one. Uh, if you, a lot of people don't like them, you know, I don't eat them. You know, if I if I catch one, I put it on camera throw it back you know and if I catch one off camera I'm just gonna take the hook out of my mouth and put it back I don't I'm not gonna eat them I'm not even studying trying to eat them <laughs> but um you're subject to catch one guys um, you know so don't let it don't don't let it get you too hot if you wind up catching one but, um you know throw it back keep on getting up because you you probably wind up catching a catfish before it gets over because they bite at nighttime too just like a catfish guys uh both and bite at nighttime and daytime blah 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 um, when you are fishing in small rivers, guys, if you if you're trying to catch a catfish, the three main ones, like down at the Buddy Hatchie, uh, the Buddy Hatchie is a small river. It's not a giant major river system like the Tennessee Tom Bingo or the Tennessee River, you know, or, or the Mississippi River, something like that. Um, you're gonna have the Channel Cat. You're gonna have. Uh, uh, Bullheads, and you're gonna have flatheads. Now, I have I have not encountered uh, a blue catfish in the uh, in the Buddy Hatchet River. Now, the Simpson River does have blue catfish. I've caught one in the Simpson River, but the 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 parts when I caught a blue cat, the water was really up. It had really rained, you know, and it was running running fast. And blue cats generally uh, hang around. Uh, and this is my experiences for small rivers when it's flooded and the water's running fast that's when the blue blue cats will be in there uh, it's not like in uh, the Ten Tennessee River or the Tennessee Tom Big B or the Mississippi where they're in there all the time uh, I don't know where they be hiding that guys when they when they're in that slow moving water and that water's kind of slow I mean don't too much find them I don't but if you're gonna be fishing in a small river if you're trying to catch catfish uh, if you throw some liver, you know, you, you'll get a lot of channel cats. Um, if you throw uh, some fish, you're subject to get, you're subject to get a bullhead. Bullheads don't get real big. Uh, the biggest one I caught is like three and a half pounds. Now, this is, this is strictly my experiences. I hadn't seen them bigger than three and a half pounds, you know. Um, you get those, you know, the yellow, yellow bullheads, black bullheads, um, brown bullheads you know um but if you put some liver on there you get a channel cat if you want to catch a flathead and and i have to change that just a little bit i caught a flathead out of the um the buddy hatchet river on a piece of shad but it was a little bitty it was a little bitty uh flathead it wasn't a big giant flathead but he, uh, he bit it but it was fresh i had just caught him and I brought them straight over here from out of uh, the Tennessee Tom Baby in Amory. I brought them straight over here to the Buddy Hatchie. 30 minutes, so they, they had just died. Cause they generally die on the way to the shed wheel. Unless you got an aerator and I didn't have an uh, air bubble aerator at that time. But I caught one that was small. It was the, had little spots on it. You no, know, it was a flathead. Um, they changed colors and stuff, blah, blah, blah. Deep water, shallow water. But if you want to catch a flathead, and I, I know you guys want to catch a big old flathead, get you a live bluegill, get you a, a goldfish, you know, uh, something that they can um, that they can eat. Get you if if you can get a catch shad, and you got an aerator, get you some shad and uh, and hook them in you know in the lower part of their back, uh, or some people hook them through the through their noses, you know that's whatever you prefer. But put them in a deep hole. Find you a deep area. Don't just throw them by the bank because turtles are in there too, and turtles be patrolling them sides. If you think a turtle won't eat a shad or, or a bluegill or a goldfish, you got another thing coming. They're gonna knock fire from them. But uh, if you can find a deep hole, guys, uh, you can find one. I notice a lot of the guys that have boats uh, that are in my area that fish the, um, the Buddy Hatchie River. Uh, they got a lot of limb lines 
and they'll run the limb lines and you can see them lots of times but it being the, the real deepest parts with the deep holes and, and that's where those flatheads will be at and they'll be big uh, the biggest one that I have ever seen come out of the buddy hatchy and and it was off of a picture but I, I know the guy personally so I know he wasn't lying uh, was a 40 pounder but I saw it with my own two eyes I saw a uh, a 12 pound flathead come out of the uh, the river and I saw a, uh, a seven pound uh, flathead come out of the, uh, the Buddy Hatcher River. Now, that was what my own two eyes, I stood there and looked at it, I'm like, wow. But uh, do that, that slow moving, moving water guys, uh, the fish do not bite, just not fire from it and just go crazy. That slow moving water, and even if it's a catfish, he'll hit it and he'll hold it. And that's what I was saying when that car passed me on that video. I don't know if you guys could hear me and understand me. <clears throat> I tried to adjust the audio, but that car just happened to pass by right when I was talking. Um, if it's that slow moving water, they'll hit that bait and they'll hold it and they'll sit there and they'll sit there and they will sit there. Then they'll finally swim off. You know, don't just grab it and go to reeling because you just pull the bait out their mouth because they don't have it. It's just, they're just holding it. I can't tell you why they're holding it, but they do that. And it's the catfish, the uh, bowfin, you know, they all bite like a turtle. When a turtle bites, if you got a turtle on the cork or if you got a cork in the water and you got some fish on there, you know, a turtle will come over there and grab it and he'll pull that cork down. Like, is this the water level? He'll pull that cork down and it won't go all the way under the water and it'll sit there and it'll, and it'll do this. And that's how a turtle does. And then after he gets hooked or he clean it, I'm gonna say this, after he gets hooked, he'll start swimming off. And you know, then there it is, it's a turtle. There's a headache. <laughs> but uh, lots of times they'll take their foot and put it on that line and bite that hook and clean that that bait off of that hook and take the foot off of it and go on and do whatever it is they were going to go do before they found your bait. So, you know, you just just look out for that. But don't grab the pole and go to reeling it, guys, if you don't have any experience with that. You know, listen to me. Even those big, uh, the, those real big uh, flatheads, um, when they bite, if, they, if you have a piece of fish on there and it's dead and it's just like cut bait, when they hit it, they don't take off with it. They sit there. The line might be jumping, but they want to, in the real slow moving water, they'll just hold it. The line might go a little slack and just sit there. And then eventually, they'll take off. But if you got a cork on there, they'll hold it right there too. Just like, you know, water turtle. I don't know why those fish bite like that in slow moving water, but they do. But, um, uh, give all this, this information I'm giving you a try. Guys, if you're, if you are fishing on slow moving uh, rivers if you know where there's some holes in the side of the bank you know throw your bait over there if you're fishing on the bottom if you're fishing with a cork and it's a slow moving river if you if you know it's a hole over there I mean you can throw it over there if, if you can get it to stay if you got the right weight to hold it down whatever that's where the stuff is at that's what the, the real big catfish be at but if you're just throwing some liver and it's not fish and you're trying for a giant flathead or whatever and you throw it out there and leave it alone uh, you'll see that cord, you know, that cord start running around, and then it'll sink. And you have to watch out for guard too, guys. When you are using a cork, and it, the same rule for fast moving water and slow moving water are the same when it comes to a guard. If you got a cork out there and a guard hits it, it's going to take off running. 100 miles an hour, shroom, like a speedboat. And then when it goes so far, if you snatch it, there won't be anything on there and the bait will be gone. That's because the guard's teeth. Where their teeth is, it's just like that. You know, y'all seen guards and the biggest real pull, real pole, real skinny. When uh when you do it, they don't they're not hooked, their their mouth is way back over here, and their beak is like way out there. You can't hook that beak nine times out of ten and they'll clean that hook off. But if you're trying to catch that guard and it takes off running, if you let it run, give it some line, it'll stop and you'll see that cork sink. When that cork sinks, he's swallowing it, if that's what you want to do. But, uh, you know, that's just the rules of that slow moving water about a certain kind of fish. I know there was not a gar in this particular video, 
but I did catch a guard in what bites Chad uh, in the in the Sipsy River. What bites Chad in the Sipsy River? I'm gonna put that video right here, and that helped you to understand what's going on. You know, um, if, if that should help you understand what's going on if you check it out. Okay, guys, keep on going fishing. Have fun. Be safe. Peace out. Thanks for watching.